Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and today I want to talk about capacitors. Our objectives are going to be to understand the definition and function of capacitance, to understand the physics of a parallel plate capacitor, and to derive the capacitance of cylindrical and spherical capacitors. So with that, let's talk about what a capacitor is. Capacitors store electrical energy. Typically, it's two conducting plates separated by an insulator. That insulator can be air or some other insulating material. You place an opposite charge on each plate, and you therefore develop a potential difference across the plates. And where is that energy actually stored then? Well, it's in the electric field between those plates that you've created by having the separate charges. So what is capacitance then? Well, capacitance is the ratio of the charge separated on the plates of the capacitor to the potential difference between the plates. Capacitance, capital C, is charge divided by voltage. And the units of capacitance are farads, or capital F. And a farad is a very large amount of capacitance. So more often we'll talk about millifarads, microfarads, nanofarads, and even picofarads. How do you calculate capacitance? Well, first off, you assume that there's a charge of plus Q and minus Q on each conductor. Then, find the electric field between the conductors. Calculate the voltage by integrating the electric field. Remember, V equals minus the integral of E dot DL. And finally, you can use C equals Q over V to solve for that capacitance. We'll see how that works with a couple examples. Let's find the capacitance of parallel plates. Two identical parallel plates, each of area A, separated by a distance D. Our first step is we're going to assume a charge of plus Q and minus Q on each plate. Our second step, find the electric field. Well, the electric field due to the plane of charge is sigma over epsilon naught. So E equals sigma over epsilon naught. Step three, we said, was to find the potential. V equals minus the integral of E dot DL, which in this case is just going to be minus E and DL will just be D. But we know that the electric field is sigma over epsilon zero. So our potential is sigma D over epsilon zero. But in this case, surface charge density, well, that's going to be the charge divided by the area. So if sigma is equal to Q over A, we can then say that potential is equal to Q times D over epsilon zero A. Finally, our fourth step, find the capacitance by taking Q over V. So if C equals Q over V, that'll be Q divided by QD over epsilon zero A, which turns out to be epsilon naught A over D. C equals epsilon naught A over D, the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Now notice that the electric field between the plates, if we look up here, V equals minus ED, the electric field between the plates is constant as long as you stay far from the edges of those plates. So we have a constant electric field point from positive to negative between our two plates. Let's see if we can't find the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. Determine the capacitance of this long, thin, hollow conducting cylinder of radius RB that surrounds a long solid conducting cylinder of radius RA. Well, our first step again is to assume a charge of plus Q and minus Q on each plate, and then determine the electric field between the cylinders. And we can find the electric field between the cylinders using Gauss's law. The integral over the closed surface of E dot DA must be the total charge enclosed divided by epsilon zero. And we're going to choose our Gaussian surface such that it's between those two so that we can then determine the electric field between them. 
And realizing that sigma equals Q over L, we can then say that the electric field times the area, the circumference of our Gaussian cylinder, times its length, L, which will be 2 pi RL, we've done this in previous videos, must equal our charge enclosed, well, our charge enclosed, if we set a linear charge density as lambda equals Q over L, then we could say that Q must equal sigma L. Therefore, this must be equal to sigma L over epsilon zero. And just a little bit of algebra then to say that our electric field must be equal to lambda over two pi epsilon zero R. And we've done that before. Now, let's see if we can't calculate the potential by integrating the electric field. V equals minus the integral of E dot DL, which is going to be minus the integral as we go from R equals RA to R equals capital RB of our electric field lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r, and dl in this case is just going to be dr. And thankfully, I can pull quite a few constants here out of the integral sign. Lambda, 2 pi epsilon naught are all constants, so this becomes minus lambda over 2 pi epsilon zero integral from ra to rb of dr over r. All right, well, if you recall the integral of du over u, that's just going to be natural log of u. So what I come up with here is that potential v is going to be equal to minus lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 times the natural log of rb over ra. Or, to get rid of that minus sign, that's minus, oops, pardon me, that's lambda, divided by 2 pi epsilon naught log ra over rb. And if lambda equals q over l, then this becomes q over 2 pi epsilon naught l times the log of RA over RB. Finally, let's find the capacitance using C equals Q over V. So if C equals Q divided by V, that's going to be charge divided by Q over 2 pi epsilon naught L log RA over RB which turns out to be, with just a little bit of algebra, 2 pi epsilon 0 L, all divided by the log of RA over RB. The capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. All right, let's go and do one more. Let's determine the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. So here we go. Determine the capacitance of a thin hollow conducting shell of radius RB that is concentric around a solid conducting sphere of radius RA. All right, first thing, assume a charge of plus Q and minus Q on each of our conductors. Then secondly, determine the electric field between the shells. And you can probably do that off the top of your head. We've done it enough times now, but we'll go through it very quickly. Using Gauss's law, the integral over the closed surface of E dot dA is the charge enclosed divided by epsilon zero, which in this case is just going to tell us that E, the electric field, times the area of our sphere, four pi r squared, must be equal to Q over epsilon naught. Therefore, the electric field in between our spheres here is going to be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught 
r squared. We've been doing that for quite a while now. Next, calculate the potential by integrating the electric field. All right, so V equals minus the integral of E dot DL. Okay, in this case, we're going to be integrating then from, that'll be RA to RB. Our electric field is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared dr. And again, I can go pull the constants out past the integral sign. So that will be minus q over 4 pi epsilon naught integral from ra to rb of r to the negative 2 dr. OK. Integral of r to the negative 2 is just going to be minus 1 over r. So we can then say that the potential must equal minus q over 4 pi epsilon naught. The integral of r to the negative 2 is just going to be minus 1 over r evaluated from ra to rb. Or minus q over 4 pi epsilon 0 times 1 over ra minus 1 over rb as I distribute that negative sign. Or I've got the negative sign here. I can do that again and say that that's q over 4 pi epsilon 0 times 1 over rb minus 1 over RA. Now it becomes an exercise in algebra. We can simplify this up a bit. That's going to be Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 times RA minus RB over RA times RB. And this implies then, since we know that RA must be less than RB, let's justify that here, RA is less than RB, that the magnitude of the potential is just going to be q over 4 pi epsilon 0 rb minus ra over ra times rb. Now for our fourth step. Find the capacitance using c equals q over v. So let's start there. C equals Q over V, which is going to be Q divided by what we just had, Q over 4 pi epsilon 0, RB minus RA over RA RB, which is going to be equal to 4 pi epsilon 0 RA rb divided by rb minus ra. The capacitance of a spherical capacitor. And in all these cases, we followed the same four steps. First thing, we assumed that we had a charge of plus q and minus q on each conductor. Second, we found the electric field between the conductors. Third, we found the potential by integrating the electric field. And fourth, we use that potential in the equation C equals Q over V to solve for the capacitance. Hopefully that gets you started with capacitors and finding the capacitance. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.